Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today our focus shifts from Sullivan County, Tennessee to Greene County, Tennessee on October 10, 1863 for the Battle of Blue Springs. Union Brigadier General Samuel P. Carter and his 23rd Corps were joined by General Ambrose Burnside and his Army of the Ohio. With their combined 20,000 Union troops, they pushed forward in an effort to clear the roads and passes into eastern Tennessee and even secure the salt works in Abingdon. Meanwhile, Confederate Brigadier General John S. Cerro Gordo Williams, along with his three brigades and two artillery batteries comprising of 3,200 men of the 1st Tennessee Volunteer Cavalry and 4th Kentucky Cavalry, in turn were determined to pin Burnside and Carter's forces. The Confederates were holding a line in the wooded hillside east of town of Blue Springs, which is current-day Mosham, Tennessee. This is while waiting for another Confederate force to succeed in retaking the Cumberland Gap. However, the end of 1863 was not the same as the early war 1862, and this would result in what would be another Union victory. After some initial skirmishing that occurred in October 3rd, both forces met at Blue Springs en masse on October 10th. On the dawn of the 10th, Burnside moved on a smaller Confederate force and directed his troops to move in an ordered manner to ensure his troops stayed together. That was until they could find a way to circle around Confederate General Williams' flank. Confederate General Williams had spread his men for more than a mile and a half across the area between the railroad and Knoxville Road, and received the first Union push at 10 a.m., with the Union cavalry harassing the Confederate forces until afternoon. The methodical approach of Burnside and Carter worked, as Union Brigadier General Edward Ferrero and his division were able to find a place in Williams' defensive line at 3 p.m. that day, where they could overwhelm the Confederate force with numbers. The full assault began at 5 p.m. as evening approached the area. The attack became heated, and as the Union began to push their way through, all Confederate troops not captured by the Union during the attack fell back to more Confederate entrenchments which they barely held on until dark, after which the Confederate forces used their discretion to retreat back to Virginia. The resulting casualties were small compared to other battles, with the Union forces only suffering approximately 100 men killed, wounded, or missing. The Confederates suffered more than double that, with 216 men comprising of at least 66 killed and 150 captured or missing. Burnside would then proceed to use Blue Springs as a springboard into eastern Tennessee to remove the Confederate control in the area. Join us again next time for Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.